Welcome back. This is part three of building metabolic fitness. In part two, I ran through a case study with you using a bike test and a run test. The idea being to teach you how to find your first lactate threshold, also known as the first lactate turn point. And that'll help you guide your green zone training. Your endurance training needs to, you wanna be hanging around that point. And I made the point to you that it's gonna feel pretty easy if you're undertrained in terms of mitochondrial function. And that's just the way it is. Uh, if you want to train more intensely, you gotta prove it, you gotta earn it. So how do we earn it? We earn it with hours, hundreds and thousands of hours of green zone training. And that's what this chart is. This chart is my uh, year, a whole year, running uh, from August to August, and it shows the split between my different sports. The other sport is skiing, and it's a mixture of downhill skiing, but it's mostly uphill skinning. And that was, I used my bike zones for that. Swimming, I'm gonna break out a separate episode for the swimmers that are watching this to offer you some thoughts on that. But as we saw last time, I didn't have a green zone, very much of a green zone running or swimming. And this was due to the fact that I had taken a 10 year break from both those modes of exercise. So the bike, specifically flat indoor riding, was the main way for me to improve my mitochondrial function. <clears throat> The other benefit of the bike is you can do a lot more volume uh, on the bike than certainly than running. So this year is about 700 hours, 700 annual training hours, and that works out round numbers, 14 hours a week. Now going from seven hours, six, six to 10 hours a week in the prior year uh, to 14 is a big jump. If I had added all that volume as running, I would have broken down, completely fallen apart. And that's why I, I recommend you use the bike if you're looking to improve your mitochondrial function. It's well tolerated and you can do a lot of it. And that's what it's gonna take. It's gonna take a lot of volume. So how might that 14 hours a week break down for you? On my YouTube channel, you're gonna find a video, a recent one called Microcycles Building Your Week. In that video, one of the key recommendations I make for you is two back-to-back -back easy days. Those days are not going to have much volume. The other five days are going to be split between easier days and loading days. And in your loading days, as well as your easier days, I recommend you think about 90-minute blocks of continuous green zone exercise. And you can do a block on its own on say an aerobic maintenance day. You can put two blocks together on a longer loading day that'll take you to three hours. And on a very long day, you could put another one on top and go to four and a half hours for your longest day of the week. Obviously for most of us, that's not gonna be a run. It'll be a swim bike run day or a multi-sport day or a long bike day with a transition run uh, done off the bike. Now, if we think about how those five days might go. If we think about the loading days, three of them having three hours, and then the easier days each having an hour and a half, that's gonna put about 12 hours into the five day block. And then on the two easier days, that'll be somewhere between zero and two hours. That's how I got to my 14 hours roughly. And then some of the days will go higher in terms of I'll have a loading day where it might even go five to six hours. Or in, a, in the summer, you'll see a video when I did my mesocycle, when I was getting ready for a long race. My easier days got easier, my loading days got longer because I was preparing for an ultra distance race. And so that's how I recommend you think about uh, the volume blocks. I would really recommend you get 90 minute blocks and then on your key days, you stack those blocks. Now, what does this mean for red zone training? Well. There's not much of it in my last year. The reason being is I wanted to focus on the bottom end. I wanted to get my fitness, my mitochondrial function established before doing a whole bunch of more intense training. We're gonna dig into that 
uh, next time when I show you my intensity split across the main training zones. See you then.